And welcome back once again to the PCA team number two. Today we have our hosts, Toaster Today, Linux Spatry, and Infinitely Galactic. Today's topic is going to be dual booting for dummies, or dummies dual boot. Now I'm lost. I shall pass the mic to Linux Spatry. <laughs> um, uh, um, where's the power button on this computer, man? Uh, um, I can't even turn it on. Uh, Spatry, a dummies is just like a figure of speech. You really don't. <laughs> Uh, Spatry, <laughs> Spatry, hang on, Spatry, get off my Skype. <laughs> uh, hi, everyone, we're just having fun between us. Of course, that was infinitely galactic, the man of many single voices. <laughs> and <laughs> toast. Yes, toaster today, that's, that's me. It's actually <laughs> toast today, thank you very much. And, of course, Spatry from South America, Florida. Thank you, IG. Welcome back. How have you been? I've been very busy and very cold, um, but uh, apart from that, pressure's off now, and uh, and I'm enjoying I'm enjoying the joys of YouTube again. Cool. All right. For tonight, this is a PC uh, 18. I think it's number two. I have been getting a lot of questions and comments, such as, "How do I dual boot? Do I have to keep?" Do I have to delete Windows? Can I keep Windows? How can I access my Windows files? Now, all three of us know how to do this. So I thought to answer those multitude of questions, which I believe I've, I have had, I have answered all of you back. If I haven't, I apologize, but we will answer this tonight. All three of us have dual booted, continue to, or at least have and know what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. So... Since this caters more, I guess more for my, my channel, as Spatry called it, the one shop, shop, uh, one stop shopping for dual booters. Allow me to get this started. Many of you have noticed, though I think you have, that I usually pick Linux distributions that are user friendly, not just in usage, but but installing, such as a simple automatic graphical user interface installation process. Boy, there's a mouthful. Meaning, but in, in other words, exactly like Arch. Uh, no. <laughs> that one's for Spatry. No. If you would like to grow many more gray hairs and use Arch, contact Spatry care of. Uh, yeah, but no. Uh, <laughs> Spatry, shut up. But uh, <laughs> So that's why I usually pick Linux Mint, Ubuntu, and Zor. And I, and I think Spatry, doesn't Ping Guy have an automatic installer, if I'm not mistaken? Let me tell you what. If you want the best out of the box experience, you definitely want to consider trying PinGuy OS because Anthony Norman, the developer of this operating system, literally thinks of everything that the end user could possibly want. You've got all the codecs necessary for playing just about any video file that you want. You get graphics editors. You get you get uh, all the tools necessary for interacting with all of your friends and family online, such as your web browsers, your instant messaging uh, applications. You even get BitTorrent clients and that sort of thing. I mean, he he literally thinks of it all and he puts it together in a nice uh, user interface that um, the beginner will easily be able to adjust to. I highly recommend it. Um, his latest version, the LTS, is very nice, but even uh, him and I still agree that his 1104.1 is his best contribution. And you can still get the you can still get that older version if you want to. On his, um, uh, he he's got all of them hosted on SourceForge, and if you choose to get the 1104.1 series. You can follow all of my tutorials. I have a comprehensive how-to series on the Linux Factory channel, the Couple Linux Show. You can check out all the videos and everything. I take you through Compiz. I take you through everything, and I teach you how to make it yours. So definitely wonderful Mike. information. Yeah. Um, My goodness, you've almost run out of plugs there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> almost. I'm, I'm telling you, ever since Spatry got the partnership, I'm calling a show off Spatry. You know, I mean, it's I mean, it's ridiculous already. You know, no, I'm just kidding. But uh, speaking of showing off, um, for those of you who are interested in Arch, I've had so many requests for this. I am going to be doing an updated install Arch 
series. It is going to be called Arch, My Way or the Highway. So keep an eye out for that channel, That I mean, that playlist. That will be coming up, and uh, I'm going to get detailed. It's going to be comprehensive, and you're going to be seeing an awful lot of the Arch Wiki. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, can we do this podcast now? <laughs> <laughs> now? Now. Now. I have to get back a strategy for botching up many of my... Yeah. Uh, Spatry, wait, wait. One, two, three. Insert cricket sounds here. <laughs> Let's get back to... Uh, thank you, Spatry. That was a very nicely detailed explanation of uh, Ping Guy OS and his good buddy, Arch. But this is uh, a newbies, kind of like a newbies, dummies Linux installation show. All right. L mm -hmm. Will you shut up already? <laughs> let, let, me, let me tell you briefly how I like to do things, and then we'll let the common sense mind of IG jump in. This is, this, this is turning out to be a center report, news and nonsense. But, uh, <laughs> see or, if we can hold it together now. Yeah, or the, or the Monday night snooze and nonsense, but no. Um, this is what I usually do. I'll either, I, will, I will download the ISO file. Let, let's say it's Linux Mint. I will check the MD5 to make sure that the file is not corrupt. Then I will either burn the ISO to a CD or a DVD if it won't fit on a CD, or transfer uh, the uh, the uh, the file or the image onto the um, onto a USB drive using PenDrive Linux and USB installer. And there's 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 more than that. Spatry, which one do you use? PenDrive Linux is by far the best tool for um, installing a live image onto a USB stick. And not only that, you really want to use a USB stick. Number one, they're cheap to acquire, okay? It's, you know, you can, get, you can get a two or four gig uh, USB flash drive um, for less than ten bucks now, I think. And you're going to get faster performance off of that USB flash drive than you would from a DVD drive, so if if that's the route you want to go, you definitely want to check out Pen. I mean, uh, uh, you want to check out uh, Pen Drive Linux. Okay. I also have a tutorial on my channel showing you how to do that, and then and okay. this admin girl has a nice tutorial on it as well. Okay. So yeah, you can check out this admin girl's channel, and uh, and she has a, a nice. Okay. Before yeah. I get to IG Spatch, I'm glad you mentioned that. Can can you explain uh, a USB drive with or without the persistence? Okay. Well, if you uh, choose to use the feature with a persistence, which the means nice thing. Well, what this means is now while you're running that live operating in live operating system mode you can actually download applications from the repositories and install them okay it will also remember any settings so if you change the wallpaper if you you know make a few changes to your operating system on your flash drive it will remember those but there is a 4 gig limit and the pretty much the limit is uh, how much room you have on that uh, flash drive that you're right. using, but I think the maximum you can go is uh, four gigs. Okay. Now, um, that's great if you're just going to have a flash drive Linux to carry around in your pocket or your purse, ladies. Yeah. Um, but when you go to install it, it's going to actually use its default install. So I don't think it's going to transfer all the settings over. But I think um, in the persistence, there may be a place where it stores all your settings so you can merge them into your home folder once you have installed the uh, distribution. Okay. Yeah, so there you go. I, I did get a question once, uh, not so long ago, about the USB with the persistence. And I, I, I think I did reply to that gentleman or lady. I hope I did, but if not, excellent explanation from Spatry. Getting back to uh, how I, I like to install it, it's either from... Uh, Booting off off the USB or a CD or or a DVD DVD. Now, when I choose to install, I mean, you can browse through the live mode, but it's it's generally not as fast. Although I believe the the USB live mode, I believe, is a little faster. But mm -hmm. say say I downloaded the brand new Zorin six, I'll transfer the files using Pen Drive Linux. 
I'll install it. I will u usually dub double click the install icon, or once you uh, boot from the drive, it may actually have a option to install di directly from the boot screen. I think that's how that works. Now, mm -hmm. here's the thing. When you read the screen, it's pretty much self-explanatory, but this is the option that newbies want to look at. Zorin, Linux, Ubuntu, and probably Pingai will automatically read or sense or know that you have Windows installed. And this works for Windows XP, Vista, yes. and Windows 7. Okay. Yes. It will read that, and you will have an option, usually three options. Erase everything, uh, custom installation or custom partitioning, or I believe the wording is, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys, install alongside Windows you know, 7, Vista, or XP. That's what you, you are click. Correct. You click that. The next bar, I'm sorry, the next screen, you'll have an option with the little slider bar to allocate how much hard drive space you want between Windows and your Linux-based operating system. Mm -hmm. If you're not sure, just go in the middle. I mean, there's nothing to really break unless there's something wrong with your hard drive, but pick, slide it in the middle. Click next, and I think it comes up. Are you sure? Because once you continue, the, this this operation cannot be undone. I think that's what it says. Okay. So you okay, right? Yes. I have I have something I want to inject here. Real Please quick. do. Yes. Before you even start the installer, first make sure you defragment your hard drive in Windows. I was about to say the same thing. Thank you. Yes. yes. Important. Yeah, thank De you. Yes, definitely. Defragment your hard drive in Windows and make sure you know how much clear hard drive space that you have yes. because you can damage your Windows setup. Let's say if you've only got 30 gigs of uh, free space yeah. in your Windows system and you tell the Ubuntu installer to allocate 50 gigs right. for uh, for uh, Ubuntu Mint or whichever ones, you're invariably going to mess up your system. So please make Thank sure you. you're in the know. Yeah. Of what for, is for, for most new PCs, hard drive space is usually not an issue, but this is one of the reasons why I wanted to have really the, the best or two of the best on the show tonight just in case one of us would mix up, miss something, and in that case, me. So, duh. There, mm -hmm. nice. there Spatch. Are you happy? No, but... Uh, <laughs> we'll skip the court-martial this okay. time. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, yeah, so you would click... Uh, let's see, where was I? Highlight or choose install alongside Windows 7. Next, follow the instructions. It'll ask for username, password. Uh, and then from there, I believe, sometimes if you type in a password, it'll, it'll, it'll say too short. That's up to you. You can just type in one, two, three if you want, and then go from there and just follow the process. If that part there, once you follow uh, Spadry's instructions first, defrag, you have enough hard space, and follow my instructions, the, the GUI installer, as we call it, is as close to 100% dummies proof as possible. Now, that being said, please, if you if you need to back up something first that you cannot live without, do that first always. And I mean always. Always. Even if, even if you know what you're doing, stuff, horse-stable stuff can happen, it, you know, whether in Linux mm -hmm. or Windows. Better still, after you back up, if you have your backup disks from your OEM that you hopefully created yourself before you went through Windows 7, because I think most PCs will allow you to create backup disks, a copy of Windows 7 for free. That's even better. But that being said, once you follow my instructions in Spatchery, you should be okay. IG, why don't you continue from there? Yeah, so basically, um, once, you've, once you've installed the system and the little pop-up will come up saying, okay, you're good to go, you can restart now or continue testing, you'll obviously want to restart because you're sick of using the live DVD and it being really slow, uh, at which point it will restart. You'll be given the boot menu with uh, usually two Ubuntu entries, uh, the top ones which will be the one that you'll want to boot into or Zorin or Linux Mint or whichever system you're using. Uh, the one under that will be recovery uh, for, the, for recovery mode for whichever distribution you've just installed and then you'll have the Windows entry down below that. Um, now, uh, if you obviously the Windows entry is going to kick you straight into Windows anyway, so that should work the way it's supposed to. Uh, but then the top two entries booting into Ubuntu for the first time. Uh, one thing that I've that I've always done consistently every single time I've installed uh, an operating system uh, alongside Windows is 
create a um, is to create an auto mount for the Windows drive. Basically, what happens is that because Windows is on a different drive, in order to access those files, you have to mount that particular hard drive that has your documents and settings on it. So uh, what I tend to do is there's a there's an application in the Ubuntu software store which is available uh, which is available on Pingai and Ubuntu and Zorin and then also the Linux Mint software manager also has it um, and it's called NTFS Config uh, which is just a little application that um, will just help you auto mount your Windows drive uh, so that you can access your documents and and uh, photos and and uh, music etc without having to mount your hard drive every single time. So then what you can do is you can actually create like a shortcut or a link uh, from that Windows drive into your home folder and, uh, and then so you can have all your pictures and music linked into your home folder on Ubuntu or Zorin or Linux Mint uh, and it's actually going to be saving it straight to your Windows drive instead of, uh, instead of saving it to the Ubuntu drive. So therefore when you restart uh, into Windows, uh, the files that you've changed, etc., and uh, any music that you've added or files that you've downloaded, if you've linked them correctly, uh, then they will show up on your Windows uh, install as well, which I found to be very, very helpful. And it saves a whole lot of copy and pasting in between times. So you can access all of your Windows files and folders uh, from, from Ubuntu and from Windows, and the changes will be kept in between. Now, I'm sorry, do what is that piece of software called again? I'm sorry? N NTFS config. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I, I yeah, have something yeah, go else ahead. I'd like to add to this yeah. as well. Also, the first time you boot into Windows after installing uh, your uh, choice of Linux, it is normal to see the uh, blue screen that comes up that says um, that your hard drive is being checked for consistency. Yes. You're going yes. To, yes, you are going to see that let it complete, but it, it should only run once. But, um, yeah, I always recommend yeah, yeah. after installing Linux, check to make sure that your Windows side is working yes, just yes. fine. And then, of course, go ahead and boot back into uh, Ubuntu and fall in love with it because you're yeah. never going to use Windows again. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say. But, no, getting, well, you mentioned blue screen. I hope no nobody has panicked from now and just tuned off the show. We, we don't mean to be SOD. What that means is that, now it doesn't mean that something is broken. All that means is that Windows 7 has sensed a change. That's all it is. And it wants to double check that nothing is wrong. That's all that means. It doesn't mean that something is broken. But to be sure, now to be fair to Windows 7, there has been a change. It has to check it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Let it, you know, do the process. It usually doesn't take that long. And then you, it then it'll boot again, and then you can choose to boot into, you know, whatever Zorin, Linux Mint, Ubuntu, Pingai, or back into Windows 7 if you have to. So yes, that is also very important. I did get another question that uh, the question was, can I access my Windows files through Ubuntu? You can if you have, and I'm looking at my my Ubuntu screen now. If you click the home folder, and it's it's the orange folder right next to the top. Now I know that in my this particular computer has a computer has a 500 gigabyte hard drive, and I allocated approximately half to the left where it says devices. Okay, uh, it'll say system, and then right below it it says 206 275 GB file system. That is my Windows side of my hard drive. I can actually access my files if I need be. Now I don't, why would I want to do that? Okay. Suppose I got a very nasty virus in Windows, you know, you know, XP, Vista, or 7, and I'm having a hard time cleaning it, and I want to reinstall it, but I, I'm, I'm having a hard time getting into Windows 7 because it runs so slow, but you have maybe 10, 20 files that you can't live without, you can boot into Ubuntu, access the Windows folders that you need to, copy those to the Ubuntu side. However, as easy as that sounds, that's okay. You'll have to, once you have that, you may want to transfer that, those files to a flash drive. Once you reinstalled Windows, if and only if you have to, you have to run a virus scanner on that USB drive with the transferred files because the virus or part of the virus may be in those files. Yeah. Very good point. I hope I made sense. But So once again, Yes, to that subscriber who asked the question, you can access your Windows 
files folder. And I think in my situation, sometimes I had to ac access my music folder. And I believe you go to documents and settings and go from there. Now, in, in my situation, I just wanted a backup. I, I didn't have any viruses. And that's okay too. But, and only but, if you have a nasty virus or virus that has slowed down Windows 7, go ahead and grab what you have to, with the reminder being that you need to run a virus scanner on those files after all is said and done. Okay, so that's one thing that Linux is good for. Uh, let's see. I think that was it for the questions, unless Spatria and IG want to add something to, to that w Windows folder thing. So, I, you know <clears throat> I used to keep a Nopix CD in my toolbox just for that very thing. Okay. Um, you know, and this was when I was just running Windows and I didn't even have a Linux partition. I still had a Linux disk just for the purpose of rescuing files if necessary. Ah. And, um, yeah, I'll tell you what, um, the, uh, the, the Nopix disks over the years have really saved my behind on countless occasions, and I highly recommend that you have a Nopix disk available to you. Yeah, yeah. Nopix, for those of you Windows folks, my, Nopix, Nopix, I believe, was one of the very first Linux-based operating systems. Are, are they still around? Oh, they are absolutely. still around, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, now, uh, Nopix, I think, was one of the first live CDs. Ah. I could be wrong on that. And it had all of these tools built into it. And, and actually, it's a complete operating system as well. Okay, okay. I mean, I mean it's got, you know, and it's fast, too. Um, okay. Even for, even, for a, um, even for a DVD or CD at the time, you know, it was really quick. Because it lo I think it loads mo almost everything up in a memory. It may maybe a few things would take a minute or two to load up, but um, I absolutely loved it because uh, they have all the tools necessary for um, recovering uh, essential things in your system. Okay. As a matter of fact, I even fixed a uh, master boot record with it once. Ah. Okay. And I, I've done the same thing. I have. Um, if any, I'm sure some of you may have heard of Parted Magic, um, which is basically the same same sort of deal, um, but slightly more specialized in that it has a lot of recovery yes. tools and yeah, uh, yeah. so you know again recovering bootloaders or recovering uh, lost partitions or uh, you uh -huh. know recovering files that sort of thing. So that's that's saved my uh, behind on multiple occasions. Cool. Okay. Gentlemen, I believe we have answered the question as as detailed as possible without somebody going. Blah, 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 blah. No, I'm just kidding, but uh, <laughs> yeah, Spatry does it better. See, see, folks, we all <laughs> we all have our talents. You know, uh, Spatry is the man of sound effects from his mouth. <laughs> <I'm stressing. laughs> uh, I've been told to have a smooth voice, thank you. And of course, IG Australia is the man of the wonderful man of wonderful game show. Will you stop it? Oh, man alive, don't bring that Please in Please don't again. do that again, yes. <laughs> he has a fascination with clippers. I mean, I don't, I, I don't, it must be like an arch thing. I have no idea, but. Uh, <laughs> it must be an arch thing. The yeah. new arch clippers, uh, yeah. But um, anyway, that's it. This is a. Dummies, dual booters, or dual booters for dummies, and I mean that with all, you know, with all respect to all of you who are new to this, like I, I was stating before, even in pre-chat, I've been getting a lot of comments, questions. Yes, you can, with reasonable safety and assurance, install one of the more friendly Linux-based operating okay. systems, and you may have noticed I use exclusively, usually, Zorin, Linux Mint, or Ubuntu. It's for a reason. They're easy to install, easy to navigate through and to, but if you follow the GUI installer, the automatic installer, and take your time, you don't have to rush this, I would dare say it's 99% safe, but that being said, as we stated, back up everything first, yes. just in case. Yes. All right. All right, IG, why don't you, uh, if you have anything, I know it's been a while since you've been on, you want to fill us in real quick of what your plans are, and then take us out if you want to. No worries. Uh, so, obviously, uh, things have been pretty busy, as they usually do. Uh, but 
uh, having said all that, there is a whole bunch going on in the Linux world that I do want to check out. Uh, obviously, a lot of the Ubuntu derivatives uh, have come out in the last month. Uh, we've got Ping yes. and Zorin and Linux Deepin as well, which I do want to have a look at that when that comes stable. And also, I've been wanting to look at Corora, uh, which is the Fedora. It's like what Linux Mint is to Ubuntu. That's what Corora is to the Fedora world. Uh, so I do want to have a look at that as well, because Fedora 17 has proved to be quite a nice base of an operating system, but not really something that's user-friendly out of the box. Uh, uh, and also, obviously, app reviews are going to keep coming as well. And uh, and also, I announced on my uh, on my channel that uh, I'm also wanting to possibly have a look at some have a look at some Mac stuff. That all depends on uh, on uh, here we go with another plug. That all depends on whether we uh, you know end up uh, reeling in enough donations for a for a Mac Mini. But again, you know, there seems to be a few of you out there that do want to hear it, and uh, there's definitely a few of you out there that don't want to hear it. So we'll be interested to see how that all pans out. But, uh, yeah, once again, I'll be more than happy to be on uh, these podcasts if and when I can get the opportunity. Uh, so thank you once again for having me on the show and for everybody for tuning in. And, uh, and congratulations, Battery, for your, uh, for your uh, multiple excuses for plugging uh, what was your partnership <laughs> and, uh, and such. It's, it's well earned and you've definitely deserved it. Uh, and uh, thank you once again, uh, Total OS Today, for hosting us and uh, for yeah, pr continually providing great information for the new Linux user. Yes. Uh, it's, it's been a pleasure once again, gentlemen, and I shall uh, virtually take a bow. Thank you, you guys. You're the best, as we stated Thank before. You. This is my extended family. It's like my family. Oh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> No. <laughs> IG, like you need to stiffle now, you know, like you did last uh. time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, folks, this is this. We are we are the original A team, and this is why. Because we're. <laughs> thank you, IG. Thank you, Spatry. Thank you, all of you, for for listening. This is always, as always, as usual. It's a lot of fun. Thank you, one and all, and. We will catch, all of us will catch you in your dual booting future. Ciao.